The way it been real you know, nobody, it is a live program on Nigeria 101.1 FM. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen all over the world. It is a great pleasure and honor to unite with you again on this beautiful platform of ours and our studio, Nigeria 101.1 FM in the United Kingdom. My name has been changed, Gloria Tokumbo Olagbaye. I want to applaud you. I want to appreciate you for listening to my program for the past uh, over 10 years now. And another year we have now coming to an end in about six weeks is going to be to the end. It's not even up to six weeks. It's just about two weeks time. You know, that the year will run to the end again. I want to appreciate you. I want to say thank you for being there for me all the way through my career, even when I was struggling, when I was uh, training as a solicitor, when I was doing everything to all those who have been supporting me. I want to appreciate you. I want to love you more. I want to say thank you. And I want to continue to use this medium to encourage you all that whatever you are doing, put your heart to it. You will achieve it. Your, you will achieve your aim in the end. We are on a live program today, again as usual, every Saturday at 2 p.m. Niger 101.1 FM to Kumbo or Lag by Ye. Hey, I'm joking. Jasha, to my Jasha, let me fake in it, one mirror in it. But there will always be original that I shine. So, to Kumbo or Lag by Ye, how to regularize your status is the main aim of coming to the lame light to let the whole world hear me. From there, a lot has happened and a lot is still happening. Being a motivational speaker, mm -hmm. a counselor, advisor, a lawyer, a solicitor, an advocate, of course, uh, you know, a social media guru, from one to the other, from one to the other. But it's not by my strength, not by my power, but by the grace that God has imputed in me to strengthen me from time to time. And as a result of that, I want to appreciate you for your support without prejudice. I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I am live here, Nigeria 101.1 FM. If you look at the topic I put out there, it is a beautiful topic, I must tell you. It's beautiful to some, it makes some cry, it makes some laugh, it makes some say, okay, let's see how far we can go with it. The United Kingdom HM, Her Majesty Passport Office, they have turned themselves to fathers. HM Passport Office, which I called Her Majesty Passport Office in the United Kingdom, where I am a citizen and where I reside and where I practice my law. They have turned themselves to fathers. Or in fact, they have turned themselves to an adjudicator that making the decision unnecessarily in the lives of people. And that decision, in no doubt, affects the rights of people breaches people's human rights. Article 14, it discriminates against many people. Abba, what is the problem? Why in the first instance would the HM government, I mean the Secretary of State, in the first instance inherently insected, insected as sections inside 1981 Act that now started saying that if a lady married to a husband previously and has not divorced, but God go into a relationship with another man who is a British citizen and have a child with a second man, it will basically means that that, that uh, first husband is the father of the second child. Have you not seen how many lives they have destroyed as a result of this nonsense, draconia, section, palatable, insulted into the earth? Many homes have been affected, many lives. Many people have, you know, turned to something else as a result of the United Kingdom government in sacking a section, which is section 50 out of something, paragraph something, I don't have it on top of my head, you know, indirectly inside 1981 Act. Without even opening the books, without reading the pres precedent or looking at sections, Immediately, I, I realized, I know that it's, it's, it discriminates against people. It's discrimination. And it's Article 14. Article 14 is in breach. The HM Passport Office, they have turned themselves to fathers. A lot of people have been affected as a result of government introducing that section. So basically, if you have, if you have married before, Good morning to you. Hi there. Hi. If you have married before and um, 
you left your previous marriage. Let me whistle blow to you before we will even make that noise. Because at the end of the day, the government will apologize in the end because we are going to make noise on it. It's not going to continue like this because I am happy that the free movement uh, group, which is part of the group I belong to, part of the uh, member that I, I belong to, the membership I, I do with them from time to time, updated me. And they've involved a lot of senior councils in that group. So it basically means that we are going to protest in writing against government. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm on 0790862840. Have you been affected as a result of the HM passport of the office revoking your child passport because you have not divorced your previous husband? So they believe that your second husband is not the father of that child that they have given that child automatically to your first husband. So they have turned themselves to a uh, <laughs> matchmaking. matchmaking. Thank you. That was the right word I was looking for. They have turned themselves to a matchmaking. So obviously they are matching child with the, another after the entirely. You know, they have not seen this as their error. It's a great error from the government side. From the HM passport and the home office. Absolutely disgusting. And as I am praying inside me, they are going to make mistake with somebody who will destroy them heavily. Because the person they will refuse the person, and the person will turn them, turn them, turn them until they take it to court. And it will have DNA, it will not give it to them. And they, it will make sure that they pay back big time. Because I think it's an insult. I'm on 07908-628240. It's all about how to regularize your status. There is no way you can regularize your status. If the father of the British, if the British father has gone disarray, gone disarray, and there's no way for you to get hold of him to come and do blood tests, you are in a mess. And don't forget, for biblical reason or for religion reason, a lot of Jehovah Witness people will not do DNA. Hence, government is getting it wrong. In fact, the whole of Jehovah Witness will not do it because their belief is that they don't want to get contaminated, they don't want to contra contract any disease. So as a result of that, they believe in what they are doing. So they're not going to do DNA. I have research on it. So the question I'm asking you is that, have you been affected one way or another as a result of this draconian section inserted under 1981 Act? Don't forget, 1981 Act is long dated back. It was one of the acts that was introduced that made children born in the United Kingdom not having their citizenship automatically anymore. But I thank God it was not introduced when I was born because they would have messed me up. <laughs> they can't mess me up anyway. I will still come to UK because UK is not a country of gold and mine. You know, so I will only come when I feel like. But the point here is that because of that nonsense draconian section inserted, majority of mom out there now are struggling with status. O shabo legbe mi, o unili aye. Fimisi le bo sheba mi. But the HF passport and the home office refuse to fisi le bo sheba. They are messing the whole thing up from time to time by thinking that they want to turn themselves to a father figure or a husband into the life of the poor woman. Don't forget that it's part of what we spoke about, issue of institution of marriage yesterday. It's not for everybody. Marriage is not meant for everybody. So to my surprise, I am thinking why should the HM passport turn to people's father or people's uh, uh, matchmaking? And at the end of the day, saying that the first husband is the father of the second, uh, is, the, is the father of the child. Meanwhile, the, second, the child has his own father. There are many scenarios of similar in my office that have come through me and they have refused them on HM passport thing. In fact, some children have passports. On application for, for leave to remain for their mom, it was revoked. It basically means that the right of that child has not been recognized.
So at the end of the day, that child is struggling because the child will not be able to travel out of the United Kingdom again until it's sorted out by the HM passport. Now, revocation of British passport. How many of you have been affected? Because once you have been revoked, you will not be able to go for extension and you will not be able to make a new application either. You are stuck under that child. Now, some of the arguments put forward and I realized that I, when I was reading through, I realized that those arguments were legitimate. It is basically a breach of your Article 14. Because I personally do not know when the Home Office... Home Office is a whistleblower, gossiper. They will gossip with the HM passport about your life, your family life. So they are intruding into your family life. Now, as a practitioner uh, in the United Kingdom that has all the information in hand from time to time, publicly I'm saying it, publicly, don't get carried away with love in Tokyo anymore. If you have previous marriage and it's not working for you, go and dissolve it. Publicly, I am opening my mouth. I am saying it. I am not saying it under pillow or under covering my mouth or changing my face or changing my voice. I'm not using anything to, to change anything. I am saying it and I stand corrected. When you look at the argument from one side to another, basically, sometimes when I change my mind, I want to support the HM. Because all that very people will not come at the same time. You are not a man, you are a woman. If you are not in relationship with the first husband anymore and you have separated for over two years, why have you not dissolved that marriage? Yeah, Coco. Secondly, this is the junction where you women will be having problems that are forcing yourself to use a, man, a man's name as your surname without him leading you to, to the altar and giving you a ring. This is the junction that you are going to mess yourself up. You have not got into that junction. In fact, you have reached the junction now. That is second opinion. On the third of feet again, Many of you that have clandestinely, or not even clandestinely, that have misrepresented some of the facts that you have inserted on your visa application to come to United Kingdom, you are in a mess. You are in a big mess. Because most of the information you put down when you were traveling into United Kingdom, Ignorance of law is not an excuse. So spare me that headache and stop telling me that an agent help you or somebody put it there. You read the content before you put in your signature. Was it an agent that, a, a, an a agent that signed it for you? Of course not. And as an appropriate adult, you are deemed to expect to sign a document, to read a document before you sign it. What of if you assign death penalty for yourself? If it's a country that practices death penalty, what if that's what you just signed? So there is no way you can use that statement ignorantly to say that you did not know what agents put together for you. It's a matter of common sense. I have done a lot of interview with clients. I have, it, I have tested their brain, tested their understanding, tested what they have done, whether they realize their mistake. I am coming to blame the government. I wish I had blamed them already. But I am talking to clients at this stage. My advice is that I am not making joke here. I am giving advice now. If you have previously married a man, and you have left United and you have left Nigeria on that visa to come to UK. You should be proposing to divorce that document by now. Before you even put in an application, you should have divorced that document. I don't care how it's done. And I don't care how you've done the application anymore. It's none of my business. 
As a legal practitioner, my advice is that why would you not divorce that document since you have not lived together for two years and you are not in relationship anymore, you are not in contact, you are not talking, nothing joined both of you together. Why are you still carrying that document? Meanwhile, you are in relationship with another person entirely. Or comedy loony. Sometimes the truth is bitter. But I'd rather, let, I'd rather take it being bitter than taking a fake uh, truth that is sweet and at the end of the day is fake. So I'd rather take the bitter one because they do lose a man so a good old man do pain and think about the two boomers. That's bitter leaf. When you eat bitter leaf and drink water with it, at the end of the day it's going to turn to sweet. So I'd rather tell the truth and let you hate me first. But later on, you will come back and say, well done to Kumbolak Bayi. So the point here is, take it or leave it. If you are in that situation now, if you are in that situation, I expect you to start making a, a, a move now to divorce the document. Don't even put in an application at all for British passport for your child now. Even if the dad is British passport is a British passport holder or a settled person, go and dissolve your first journey in life. Now the danger there is that under Family Law Act, under Family Law Act, to dissolve a, 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 a relationship. Marriage, rather, is not relationship, it's marriage because that is only that is the only situation you can have documents. The rest is just cajo. It's only a marriage you can have certificates in relationship. Nobody gives you certificate of boyfriend and girlfriend. So forget about that. <laughs> so let's use the correct word for it: marriage certificate. So when you about when you want to dissolve that marriage. The problem under Family Law Act in the United Kingdom because you have lived there over three years. So you are habitually residing in the UK. Under that law, a country where you have lived for 12 months will have power, jurisdiction to dissolve that marriage. A country where you have lived 12 months continuously will have jurisdiction. So the best bet is the person who is overseas to dissolve that marriage for you. Can you this software? He will get a kidney. And it's a long year. Oh, no, 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 no. He will talk one big, one big, one big, one big. Oh, sing at the FFA, yeah, she actually, you go to school, 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 go to I will tell the truth. And they know that I am saying it. Blunt, bluntly there is no way you can escape this problem to one at the moment on Titabato para the last court and we have not even prepared the document the superiors have not they have not prepared I want to say jam papa my superiors are just doing jam papa at the moment the QCs the baristas everybody they are just doing jam papa but they knew that the article 14 is being breached by the Secretary of State to you, Bolle, the Secretary of State, Aaron Nuru. But it cost money to go to to get it to Supreme again. That is Jafumi. So before anything will happen again, to go and fight for you, because I know 2019, we will get there. We will fight it. Because somewhere we cannot overlook it. As long as we are practicing this law, we will still take it to court. But in the meantime, you are having a double husband. Don't let anybody deceive you. Common sense, ne? It is true. My Yoruba language says that Obinye lo lo mento bi mofun. Be nigba mi Obinye okim mento ba lo lo kuni megi tum ba sun bakbo. Afito ba di ene lo ma tum mo. Ibito mo fisti wole usini la rani. 
it be two more fees to to in that area. But it is not every time we have we have to be coming. I have to be coming on my platform. I'll be quoting section five, section six, section three. Inside those sections is what I'm saying now. The problem to why so instead of me quoting section, 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 because you are not a lawyer, there's no need. The best bet to assist you is to pieces it like a puzzle. You understand? The best bet is to pieces it. And that's what I'm doing. Because the sessions are there, I can easily crack it. I'm a lawyer. I went to law school. I'm qualified. I'm a solicitor. I can easily quote sections for you and lost you in the desert, in the realm of it. But there is no need. The law school told us that when you are speaking to lay people, speak language they will understand. Instead of you being arrogant and quoting section, section, section to a layman person. And this is the reason why I'm pissing the section to you. Because in the last a month or two, in fact, when I was coming now, on my way coming, my car picked up the call. And inside that call, it was revocation of a British passport again. I had one yesterday. There was one previous day, and there was about two or three. So it, it means that home of uh, HM passport and home office, they are very rude. But then at the end of the day, they will defend their rudeness. If care is not taken, one day and two, let you go go. At the end of the day, they will defend that rudeness to the core. There is a senior judge that is saying that in the event that the home office has stretched himself and couldn't get anywhere out, the best result home office could do is what he has done to ask for DNA. But have they even taken into account the religious belief of Jehovah Witness people that doesn't do DNA, that doesn't give blood? People have died as a result of them refusing to give DNA, but they believe like that and they, they accept it. Now, any end loss on but they're not going to give blood. Has Home Office ever considered that at all? Of course not. They have not done their research to that level. But don't be their victim. Do not be their victim. And the only way not to be their victim is common sense. They solve that problem. Are you not the funniest thing that makes me so laugh? Hey, myself, me, when you know you say Nikai, you are you are putting on documents that marriage. Now, to my wife, you know what I was a Nikai last time, she. But you have already explained it on document as marriage. Home office does not understand what is called Nikai. Because Nikai is more or less an engagement. So it's not marriage. But wrongly. Nigerian women are so are so daft. Sometimes apology ap apologies. Papa party tell you a woman fall in love with it, idiotly, and you and wanted to so strong and what they are so eager to use the man's son name. Do you ever thought that the repercussion will come this time around now? And let me after ten years in the repercussion. Some people after 12 years, after 13 years. And you know what? It's not, it's not only you in the UK that's having that problem. But there's one of my lady in Germany. She's she too might be online now. She wanted to renew a British passport of her child. They asked her to go and bring the DNA. To go and bring a... They asked her if she has married to the husband before. Oh, no. So, yes. Me, we other the marriage. Hello? 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 Hmm? Yes, I'm on a live program. Are you joining us? Yes, ma. Please go ahead. I just, yes, sorry, I just want to ask a quick question, ma. And concerning what you are treating today, I, I think I have similar, I don't know if it is similar for them, because I left in Nigeria about 13 years ago, almost 14 years ago. But when I did my um, visa, I put my marriage certificate there. But when I got here, I didn't see my baby father since then. We haven't seen since 2005. And I learned he went to Spain, but he's already married there. Maybe I think he did the divorce there with the marriage certificate. But here I am, I've already had um, two and a half years, um, two times. And my boy that I born here 
it will be ten stones. So I don't know if that thing we have. Listen, made, listen, but listen. But you see the way the 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 way home office play the game is fantastic. Sometimes. <laughs> because I see it as a game, for puzzle. You see, for those all, to those all that are applying for their kids under 10 years, they never have yeah. any problem. There was no problem with them. <laughs> so if your child was born in the UK, legitimately stayed in the UK without interruption continuously for 10 years, okay. your child will go through registration smoothly. As long as you have not put that child out of the country for long and bring that child back. No, no, uh -huh. no. You are okay, you are fine. Thank you, Thank you. You see, Nigerians lie so much sometimes. It's not only Nigerians, but it's very funny. One thing be on my Niger day, I think we need for B3 years. One thing be called Osisku Mwonde, but because we're on the cool day, one one dark part, all I'm fair apply for, or do my wife, and fun, you will pay the papa. Aba. Or Delhi, I'm going to call off and go to the sophisticated machines, instruments that he discovered. Because during that process of one to one to three years, there are some injections that we take in this country if you were born here. And midwife will initiate it in your that NHS book. It will be initiated in that book that you were seen, that child was seen, so 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 dead. You have to take that injection continuously for three years. But unfortunately, they fail to understand me. Now leave that aside. Let's carry on with the topic we are talking about. If a child is born in the UK and stays in the UK continuously for 10 years, it is that child's legitimate right under the British Nationality Act again, but a different section entirely. That child will be registered. It will be registered and have a citizenship of the United Kingdom. That child place of birth will be written like mine, Acne, Omatin, Islington, Lucia, therefore anywhere. So Yato, that's a citizen by the soil. The moment they register that child, it becomes a UK citizen by the soil. Although they have used that word in our time and they don't use it anymore. But categorically, I can still say to you that a child born in the UK register continuously for 10 years and live in the UK continuously for 10 years, of course, will be a UK by the soil, citizen by the soil. Where the problem is coming from on this issue of revocation is the issue of mommy with previous marriage that failed to dissolve that marriage. You said you are not with a man anymore. Boja we we boja Gigi ni you should get money to divorce that marriage. As long as there is marriage certificate and as long as you can remember on your application that you have you have mentioned that you were married, you must dissolve it. So you need to look for money to dissolve the marriage. And let me tell you the truth of the matter: United Kingdom is the country where you have to take the divorce document to because you have lived here over twelve months. So United Kingdom will have jurisdiction. United Kingdom courts will have jurisdiction to dissolve that marriage, even though it was conducted in Nigeria. It is in the United Kingdom that you have to dissolve it because at that time you are you will become you are becoming a petitioner. So you are petitioning the other person because you have not lived together for over two years. So the case has been separated. So on separation, separation or on dissection or basically on here say that he's commit, he has committed adultery, you have seen evidence or possibly because he's aggressive, he's violent, you know, you want to call it to a day or the fifth one is because you have lived apart for five years. There are five grounds under Family Law Act for you to use one of them to initiate divorce. You cannot use five of them. Adultery is always number one. The second one is behaving irrationally, irresponsibly. And then you look at 12, uh, two years uh, separation, you look at five years. And then you, uh, there, and then you look at the section. Understand? So in the event that you are unable to do those things and you have not got the documentation, the Home Office will be right without prejudice to say that. You see, why, I, why I, I, I find it difficult to support them is that why should they determine who is my, who is my child father for me? 
Why should the Home Office determine who the father of my child should be? That is where I fail to, to concur. There is no way I can appreciate that statement with the Home Office. I think they are intruding. If, they are, if the judge is standing in the front, in my, if I'm standing in the judge front in a presence in court, I am going to be using intrusion as part of my argument. I am going to support it under those sections that are applicable under human rights because they are intruding into family life. So Article 8 will kick in again. When have you turned yourself to a, a camera or surveillance to be surveilling my family life and telling me who the father of my child should be? Of course, if you're in a second relationship, unfortunately, you can't see the man. There's no way you can do blood tests. There's no way you can conduct DNA. So ask me a question. When did home office assume the responsibility of a father in my family life? When did they turn themselves to my husband or to my boyfriend? That's the question home office is failing to answer. And they are the one with blowing it to HM Passport. Because when they HM Passport write a letter, they don't know how to talk. I'm a two or on HM Passport. They don't know how to talk. I'm a two or on So you can test it with that. It wasn't by their wisdom to pick it up. It was Home Office that is whistleblowing. Home Office would have told them, and in their letter they will say, We have received from the Home Office. We have heard from Home Office requesting us to revoke your passport, your son's passport, 5511234566, dated, da 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 da. And they, after then, they will tell you that if you use that passport to travel out of the country at your own risk. There is one incident I'm reading on my way coming now. In that incident, I realized that a child went on holiday with a British passport. Six weeks holiday with a British passport. Before the child came back, they have revoked the British passport. So they refused to let the child in. And it's another country entirely. But they signaled to that country immediately and said that child must not board in. I'm do my fan of every year. You be too much is a daft to look policy. I am just reading it now. It's a case study. It's not a joker. So you got to be you. You got to play the game smartly as well. Some of the bad bug bug kick you, kick you. Yeah, now go to the bottom system. If one office think that I won't fair, I won't fair by a ninja, and you know, I was ahead of the game. One more, so me or she did so. Common sense, you know, you are not in relationship with a man anymore. Why should you be using this document? Why should you, should you still be carrying this document? Because you are in a relationship with another man entirely. So the man, the man you are in relationship with has the final say in your life, and it's in control, it's in charge. So it's a matter of common sense. It's a matter of common sense. So you've got to understand where we are coming from. You have to understand. If you're going to steal the money, you have to steal it. If you're going to borrow, go and borrow, you have to dissolve that relationship first. So when they're asking you on your pa on your HM passport, uh, child application, you say, are you married? No. You cannot say separated. Single. Divorced. Because most of the people that I interview, I question, I realize that truly and truly, they were in relationship before. They were in marriage, but they've not dissolved it. That's just one side of it. The point I'm raising is that what is the home of his business in it? If the father of a new child, if the new husband or the new partner sign the document, excuse me, put the passport reference number there, put everything there. Hey, hey, I'm getting worried. What is some of his business to say that, oh no, I'm not accepting this, I'm not doing that. What is their business? Do you understand? What's some of his business? Because what is important is that it must be the father's signature on the application form, his passport number, his details must be there on the first one, not on the renewer. And on the renewer, mom should be able to renew the document anyway. Some mom have gone through successfully to renew the document. So maybe at the end of the day, maybe I should even reverse to Ori Lafi Merlawo. That everything is about luck. Or some people are just born to be unfortunate. So as a result of that, it's when home office is in a bad mood, you pick them up. It was the time they are in a bad mood. And those that are badly affected, yeah, 
are the children that are born from October 2015. Despite the fact that Secretary of State apologized last time and said, I did not send my staff to be talk uh, conducting DNA on children born in the UK to a British father. You will remember that he apologized, and this is the new Secretary of State, this guy there. He did apologize and said, listen, I'm sorry, came out publicly, said he was sorry. But let me tell you, most of the case studies I am saying to you now, some of them are kids born 2015 downward. And some, they have been born before September 2015. For example, the child that was refused to board in, it was a, it's a six-year-old child, so it's badly affected. And it's a child that is in school already. A child that has no other place except United Kingdom. How dare you government doing that to them? How dare HM Passport send the message down? And they send it down to another country entirely. It was the country aircraft that picked it up and said, we cannot board you. Thank you. Thank you. Exactly. You can even decide to adopt a child. Th that's the thing. But they will be saying that you should have the adoption document. So when you are adopting a child, you have to put all the adoption documents to obtain the British passport. You will not be asked to do DNA. The point is that if you are not in relationship with baby's father, how are you going to get DNA? Are you going to use your saliva to do DNA on behalf of the baby's father? When is his, is his blood that they are looking for? What about where the IRA was obtained precariously and subsequently obtained British passport, ma? I don't know about that. Some of the indefinite leave to remain that was obtained unnecessarily, fraudulently, were end up taken back by the Home Office. Anyway, when they were going for the biometric card, Home Office seized them. Yes. Home Office took it back. Home Office retained it. But if you put in your IRA requesting for card and you, you were successful, then you are okay. Good luck. You know. But if it was obtained precariously, it basically means that home office, if you go through the card to ask for biometric card, home office will run checks on it. You understand? We'll run checks on it. But I'm not particular of any fraudulent act. I am not accepting that. If it was obtained wrongly, so be it. Let the owner take back the, take, uh, take back the ownership. It's like taking my things. If you take my jewelries and, and I didn't give it to you, of course it was taken fraudulently, so I have to take control of it, take it back, be in possession. So that's just as simple as that. So ladies and gentlemen, it is exactly one hour that I want to use. i got six minutes and I'll be off your back because I don't have the whole day to spend more time on the platform today. I want to appreciate all of you. I am available. I can just take one or two questions before I leave if you're affected. I'm on 07908 So it's about revocation of British passport. Revocation of a British passport of a child, you know, British child. British child being denied. Meanwhile, the Supreme Court lady held that I fancy in my career as a senior judge old woman. I really do fancy her in my career. She said that a British child must remain in Britain. A British child must have a British education and British lifestyle. She said it under Section 55. And it was in the case of Tanzania she mentioned it. But at this, at this, at this difficult situation, this difficult stage now, it basically means that HM Passport and the Home Office collaborating and doing what they like. In fact, trying to override the judge's um, decisions, which is an insult to the jurisdiction. So ladies and gentlemen, if you are affected by this topic today, make a move quickly. One can she see. Do something before it gets messy. Yes. So that is the situation. We talk about the revocation of a British passport from child, from British child in the United Kingdom. Or their refusal to issue British passport to a child born to a British father and requesting for a DNA when the British father and the mom are not in relationship. Of course, DNA is impossible in that situation. DNA will be impossible. In fact, the guy will not answer you from heaven to heart because he doesn't even feel like talking to you anymore. 
So it basically means that only your name joke in joke, but it looks as if it's double jeopardy in anybody that is affected. Your previous marriage, you have not dissolved it. The second one is not working. Relationship, the guy is not there. Home office is asking for DNA. You can't provide DNA. They refuse to issue British passport. It's double jeopardy. Yes, it's double jeopardy. Which we don't normally practice it in the UK, job, double job party, but that's what my office is doing indirectly. Hello? Yes, ma. Yeah, hi. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. So basically, if you have any other thing to talk about, then we will move on from there. But apart from that, ladies and gentlemen, I remain your humble lawyer with great humility and with God on my back. I want to appreciate all of you. Without the strength God put inside me, I won't be able to do it. But I want to say thank you to all of you that are bored today. I intentionally don't want to take calls because I intentionally want to give this statement out publicly. So like and share and put it to your wall, put it every, anywhere. I'll be sending WhatsApp of it together as well because I've, I've, been, I've, I've got some of the very good sophisticated uh, Samsung um, tablets, which basically means that you can WhatsApp, you can move things to WhatsApp, you can copy and link and put it to WhatsApp, unlike my iPad giving me a dig. iPad is too rigid, you know. So Samsung, thank you to you. When there is competitor, you do things better and better. So I want to appreciate all of you, but I got to go now. Don't forget, festive period is around. Don't forget, I said to you, my able fans, your things are in the office. You should start from Monday, 10 o'clock, and start coming in to pick it up. But when Tebawal office, Tebawal uh, around, come to office and come and pick up your Christmas gifts. But it's only one per household, please, I beg you. Only one per household, you know. I want to appreciate you. I want to do well over you. I shake Galori City Lay in Mitten Timmy Lay. Oh, you need to see him. I took my delight at a la fear. Next week, to your long bar for me, no quite a bar. If I do my shopping on time, I may come online. If not, we will do a program during the week and Friday, of course. You know, because the traffic will be bad next week coming to this angled studio. But I would try if I have the opportunity. But having said that, I can't do it without you. So I want to appreciate you. I want to say thank you to all of you. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye for now.